Hi, this is Paige DeSorbo from Giggly Squad. How would you like to look five years younger? In a clinical study, people that had volume added with Juvederm, Voluma XC in the cheeks perceived themselves as looking five years younger at six months after treatment. Look younger, feel like you, add volume for lift and contour in the cheeks with Juvederm, Voluma XC, and reverse signs of aging by adding volume to smooth laugh lines with Juvederm Velour XC. For important safety information and to find a licensed specialist, visit Juvederm.com. That's J-U-V-E-D-E-R-M.com. Not for people with severe allergic reactions, allergies to lidocaine, or the proteins used in Juvederm. Common side effects include injection site, redness, swelling, pain, tenderness, firmness, lumps, bumps, bruising, discoloration, or itching. There's a risk of unintentional injection into a blood vessel, which can cause vision abnormalities, blindness, stroke, temporary scabs, or scarring. Talk to a licensed specialist to find out if it's right for you. This special story is brought to you by our sponsor, Kate Spade, New York. Okay, you guys know how we feel about summer. It is not always easy breezy. Sometimes it's sweaty, frizzy, and if it is us, you know there's going to be bug bites, (laughs) among other things. Bring us back to fall. Why are we so anti-summer? We really shouldn't be. You know what? Because we spend so much time in the city, the subways, the scents, all of that. We're looking for a little bit of escape, a little bit of convenience. You know, that, that goes out the window once the temperature hits like 90. I guess. But I try and find a little bit of like fun and adventure even here in New York City. And it always just backfires. Remember? No, but it's there to be found. It's there to be found. Okay, I had adventure, but do you remember? I, it was, I think it was two summers ago. I went out to Jones Beach mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm so romantic. Me and Eric are going to take a bike ride out. It was like a big, long bike ride, gotten some exercise. Isn't there something like very sexy sometimes about doing like a sport with a loved one? Like you get a little adrenaline going, whatever. So we're biking through. I've never done that, but keep going. <laughs> we're biking through like these nice little back roads to get to Jones Beach where we're going to go to the beach. And all of a sudden, like, I guess Eric biked over. Do mosquitoes have hives? I don't think they do. But like whatever he biked over stirred up a mosquito swarm. I don't know how else to describe it. I ended up with, all right, longtime listeners are going to remember the number and I don't. (laughs) but I think it was 37. Do you remember what I looked like? I had 37 bug bites. And then I found out later they were tiger mosquitoes. Oh my God. Because we don't have normal mosquitoes here in New York City. Oh my God. It was my summer of misadventure. (laughs) The summer of misadventure. Oh my gosh. Well, so this summer, listen, we're going to be more prepared. We're going to look like those people who have it together. We're going to wear white. We're going to have cute little outfits. And we're going to pack the perfect beach bag. I got a new one from our fabulous sponsor, Kate Spade, New York. It's black and tan crochet raffia. It has the perfect strap drop. It's really cute. It's very me. It's neutral. So it goes with a lot of my things. And you look polished. I I love this idea of packing the perfect summer bag. I feel like there's so much you can't control in life. Like having everything you need in your bag is like key. So I'm just going to share a little bit of what I'm putting in my bag this year. I really think it's going to help. I'm not going anywhere without Band-Aids. I'm not going anywhere without like shout wipes in case I get a mm-hmm. stain. Eric's very into white denim this summer. Great, Eric. You know what gets really dirty? White denim. White denim. Oh, this man really is, a, 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 a works at a men's style fashion magazine. Well, he does work at Esquire. Yeah. And yeah. I got yeah. these little cutter mosquito wipes and sell it. It's the insect repellent in a white form. So I can like, if we're just going to, you know, something off the cuff and we do something out in the woods, I will be prepared. I always have my sunscreen, you know, a little, little essential oil. So in case I want to need to do some breathing exercise, you know, how people are always like take deep breaths to help yourself like yeah. chill in the summer. I like to put a little like roll on on my palms and breathe in through them and breathe out. Do you like that for me? It's funny. I just stocked up on my Tata. Oh yeah, mine's Tata Harper. Yeah. <gasps> They're so good. They're so good. Okay, I'm gonna put those in my Kate Spade New York bag. And I think mm-hmm. that'll be, I'll be ready to have an excellent summer. And we hope you're all inspired to have an excellent summer. Pack your own little summer survival kit. Treat yourself to a new bag from Kate Spade New York. They have this incredible summer collection. Now it's their 30th anniversary and their summer of adventure 
not misadventure, of adventure. And they've got all sorts of new clothing, accessories, including a reissue of their iconic Sam bag that started it all back in 1993. You can shop their entire collection on katespade.com. And thank you again to our sponsor, Kate Spade, New York. Hey, hey, everyone. It's Friday interview day on Fat Mascara, or whenever you're listening to this. What's up? I'm Jess. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen. Okay. Yeah, you to listen today. You could listen this weekend. Whenever yeah. it pleases you. But today, we've got an incredible interview. Jen, tell us who we've got. Well, we have makeup artist Nikki Posley, but I should preface this by saying I warned him too as well. He is not a bridal makeup artist. But I was like, I really want to talk about wedding makeup because I feel like it's such a loaded topic and it's in the ether right now. And so many people always ask me questions about it. And then remember Sophia Richie's wedding? Jess, I do. Did you see how like everyone was like losing their damn minds? Obsessed. Why is it different? Why is bridal makeup different? And I said this as- Exactly. And that's what I wanted to get to. Like, what is it about bridal makeup? And Nikki, very smartly, is like, okay, let's. it's event makeup. It's like, we are bringing it today and it has to last. So he has tips on that. Anyway, let me give you a little background. Nikki's a fine artist and a makeup artist based here in New York City. Well-known educator. He offers courses of all levels to makeup artists. So if that's interesting to you, by the way, you should go to his website, nikkiposley.com. Check out his links because you can sign up for online courses and tutorials. He's been spotlighted by publications such as BuzzFeed, Allure, Essence.com, and worked with some well-known names, including a past Fat Mascara guest. He worked with Sloane Stevens, but also Serena Williams, Chrissy Teigen, Queen Latifah. So we'll hear about Nikki. He's great. I love to catch up with him and hang out with him. But then, yeah, I pushed him a little bit on what's going on with the bridal makeup. How do you do it well? How do you have a good relationship with a bridal makeup artist? What if you want to do it yourself? What are the products that stay? He took me inside his kit a little bit. <laughs> Jess is not here for this interview. It's just me and Nikki talking bridal, but it's a great interview. Hope you enjoy it. Here it is. Okay, Nikki, welcome to Fat Mascara. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. It's so nice to connect with you guys. I know. I love this. So you've been a makeup artist for years. We're not going to age you here, <laughs> but you do have a lot of experience. When, like, How did you even get into this career in the first place? I've been a fine artist my entire life. And um, around middle school age, through my best friend, who is a hairstylist, I got an introduction, a firsthand amazing introduction to the beauty industry. And I would just be hanging out at the salon waiting for him to finish so that we could get together and, and hang out. And I just became obsessed with what I was seeing, the transformation, the way people sit up straighter and sit up taller when they feel good about the way they look. And whether it was cutting hair or seeing these amazing hair color jobs they would do, it was just really intoxicating to me to see art on living people. You're li- Wait, you're a little precocious though. Middle school? Middle school, you're going to hang out at the hair salon. Yeah, yeah. That's what we were doing. <laughs> And would you sweep? Would you help? Or are you just sitting there watching your friend? Oh, no. I was just sitting watching. <laughs> this is your entertainment. Yeah, I wasn't I mean, I'm there for it. I'm there all. for it. You already knew that you loved this kind of transformative art, huh? I did. And my traditional artwork had a lot to do with figurative body and face. And he actually saw something in my makeup work before I did. In my artwork, sorry. Before I did. And said, I think you'd be really good at makeup. What was your medium that you were doing this figure? Was it painting? Painting and drawing. Graphite pencil and what's called oil sticks. They're like huge fat crayons, but they're drier oil paints. So you can be messy and expressive with it. And in this messy expressiveness, there was like (laughs) a little makeup artist blooming? Yeah. I mean, I was obsessed with the face and all the different things it could convey. You tell stories through your expressions. And that's what makeup and hair people do. They tell stories and... They allow people to live in their art. Yeah. And at what point did this become more practical that you were like, maybe I should go get some training or this is a career? Because I feel like I had no idea what I was doing in middle school. (laughs) Well, I'm I'm self-taught. I mean, I would wear a bit of powder, maybe a little bit of a brow fill-in and a touch Mm -hmm. of mascara myself. But, you know, that was just to look very naturally polished. But... 
in the process of learning on myself and begging my mother to sit still for a minute so I could practice on her. <laughs> you did your mom's makeup? I did. I did. You know, she wasn't with it at first. She's, she's not really a makeup kind of girl. She'll give you a beautiful brow and a bold lip, but the rest for her didn't feel practical. So I would kidnap whoever would sit still. And they were kind enough to let me mess up and they sat way too long for way too little, but that's how I started. Where were you? Where did you grow up? Uh, Rockford, Illinois, about an hour outside of Chicago. Okay. And so all the like suburban moms and aunties and friends, you, they'd sit for you for how long? Like how long was it taking you to start do a face oh, when you first my started? Gosh. You know, back then I would, you know, I would sit with, have people sit with me for a couple hours. I used to work in the printing industry and I would ask the girls that I worked with after a full shift to come home with me and let, let me practice on them. And, you know, oh, they wow. were down. Well, I mean, they left looking, having their transformative moment, I imagine. I was okay, because the truth is, my makeup was really a direct extension of what I was doing with painting and drawing. I was just working yeah. on a different canvas and learning some different application tools. So I already had a certain level. I just shifted what the, the discipline was. What's your career like these days? Like, what are some of your favorite types of work to do? And, and what, you know, what are you known for? It's always a mixed bag of work for myself. It can be red carpet type of stuff. It can be getting someone ready for a television appearance. Press days I tend to enjoy, but I'm also an educator. I teach other makeup artists to be prepared for whatever genre they're interested in going into. I'm known, in my opinion, for classic beauty, the kind of makeup applications that are able to sort of exist in multiple spaces. But timeless beauty is definitely... Um, so multiple spaces, meaning it's going to look... It's not going to look trendy, and it's going to look good if I take a photo, if I see it on Instagram, if I see you in real life. Yeah, you mean? yeah. It's made to sort of stand up in all of those situations. And what made you make education part of your career? You know, nobody asks uh, a makeup artist to start giving back in this way. Is, this, is it enjoyable to you? Did someone ask you for this? You know, it was something that I was sort of pushed into early in my retail days. There would be different events that would come up. Oh, so you were do you did retail? Were you at like a counter? Yeah, yeah. I worked behind the counter for many years. And I What brand did you work for? I started with Mac in Chicago. I worked at one location for eight years uh, full time. So it was a deep All dive. the best artists worked at a Mac store. I swear. It's, it's the truth. It's the truth. Yeah, that's where it started my first actual professional experience and you learn a lot about makeup, but you also learn about being of service. I'm a servant in the same way that a personal trainer is or a personal chef. I'm just doing makeup. Do you still feel that now, even no matter who the client is? Yeah, I think you have to go into these different situations with the attitude of service. And that's something that I say with pride, because the world needs our art. You know, people live their lives in the art that we create. And that's an honor to have somebody want to do that. And when you do classes, is is someone coming to you who, like say someone's listening and they want to be a makeup artist, they don't have a ton of training. Do, will you teach someone like that? Or is it more for like advanced practices for people that already have a little bit of a working background in makeup? I teach all levels. I'm, I'm able to meet them where they are. And that's sort of a conversation that we would have. I do in-person education as well as in the digital space. Oh, you do like a like a Zoom lesson? I actually have a platform specifically with pre-recorded workshop based on different classic beauty looks. The kind of timeless beauty looks that made me want to become a makeup artist is really what I created. So I have sort of a digital book for people who are interested in my type of process, whether it's complexion or brows, color, contouring, highlighting, all of it. Okay, I'm obsessed with this idea of timeless beauty because I think this relates well, to something that I wanted to talk to you about, which is it's wedding season right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, tell me, how many weddings do you think you've been to in your life? As wow. A guest? It's probably <laughs> been thousands because I, I think that I started doing bridal the second year I was doing professional makeup. I've, I've done okay. a lot of that. And when I think of wedding makeup, timeless beauty is sort of a good lens to look at it through because... I'm there to sort of set them up to put their best face forward so that when they're looking at pictures of themselves over the years, after that, they're really happy about the way they look. 
but they feel like themselves too. Yeah, it, that's a hard balance, isn't it? Yes. Bridal, you learn a whole lot about not only style stepping with the client, but communication, understanding how to interpret a look, because it's not like they know technically what it takes to get them across the finish line. You want to deliver it without overwhelming them. There's a lot. It's a dance. So I, tr- I choose Wait, my what dance is partner as well. Style stepping? I've never heard that term. What does that mean to you? Style Think stepping. about it like this. Some women for their wedding day, they want to look like the most refreshed, natural version of them. They don't necessarily want a lot of look. They want the skin perfected, the brows to be neatly groomed, maybe a little bit of gloss and mascara. There's so many different lanes and it's a dial up. Through my conversation with them or any client, we discuss what level do you want to see this look on? Are you wanting to be gap ad natural, that level of polish, or do you want <laughs> right. full on Instagram diva? It, it's, it's, it's a conversation. And what I got good at really quickly is picking my dance partners. If I couldn't see myself hanging out with her, I'm probably not going to work with you on your wedding because you go into the sort of vortex of stress with them. And (laughs) (laughs) you're like, I don't need that anymore. No, no. And I I did a lot of it in the earlier part of my career, much more selectively now, but there's a certain armor that you have to have to go into that space with somebody. And it's about trust. Newer makeup artists tend to focus more on the technical aspect of it. How am I going to deliver this look? What kind of lip? Are we focusing on eyes? Whatever. But you really need to get focused on energy. You want to be with someone whose energy complements yours and vice versa because you become the go-to guy for that entire six months to a year until you get them across the finish line. So you really need to like that person. Six months to a year. I I am... (laughs) First of all, I should put it out there right now. I did my own wedding makeup and I was very last minute about it. But look, this is a good question. Wait, before we get into the details of this, I have to ask, just take off your Nikki Posley, very professional educator, makeup artist. Just as a guest at a wedding, you weren't doing the makeup. If the bride steps out and you Mm -hmm. look at her, tell me, when you see the bride right away, you know if it's going to be a success or not with that look. What to you is like, okay, this is a successful look. She's happy. They did a good job. What does that read as to you? She needs to be relaxed. Aesthetically, I want to see the skin just look polished and beautiful. Okay. We're talking about a different part of the dance. She needs to look good and relatable in person, but she also needs to be enough to read well in photos. And that comes from experience. You have to sort of get your hands dirty to understand how to straddle that line. Natural to a photograph isn't the same as natural in person. That requires more makeup. And this is one of the things that I have had to discuss many, many times with brides. To create the most natural version of yourself actually requires more makeup from a photographic standpoint. Take, for instance, what we've all called the J-Lo glow, that sort of, I call it glorified natural. She just looks bronzy and fresh, sculpted and glowy. The perception of that is she has on a little mascara, lots of bronzer, some mascara, a quick lip. That's actually at least three different colors of foundation, two to three colors of powder. To create natural requires more expertise because I'm not depending on the boldness of a lip to hold your eye or a smoky eye to grab all the attention. Natural to a photographic reality means I really have to understand the tones I'm looking at because I have to work in complete harmony with what's there because I don't have yeah. sort of a gotcha moment to hold your eye. So You figured out my secret, Nikki. I'm just like, <laughs> throw on a red lip. Then nobody notices anything else. <laughs> But you can't you can't do that on a wedding day, probably. Most women are like, no, I want to look like me and Yeah, and, and it, it is a dance. You have to go through a little bit of rehearsal with them. You have to sort of educate them to understand that you're gonna need to wear typically more makeup than what you would wear because it's about what the camera is going to see and how it's going to be photographed. It's not your shoes people are gonna be looking at in pictures. For years after that. It, it's all an education, but you have to do it with love. Have you ever had a case where, uh, this just occurred to me, that someone's like, I'd like you to do my makeup for the portrait session, but then let's, 
I actually remember this now. My friend, she she's Indian. She had a big Indian wedding. There was a whole portrait session, and she came to me mid ceremony. Sorry, Roop, I'm calling you out. And she was like, I need to go out there now and we're going to dance. And now it's the fun part. The pictures are done. She's like, look what the makeup artist did to me. And she had full on glam. Like yeah. it was, she was very powdered. It's a very cultural look to do like this, like powdered, lighter face kind of. It's She's like, I don't on. look like me. She was like ready to cry. And I was like, let's just take it down a little. So like I blotted off some of the base yeah. because that was like the look. And then she wanted to look like herself. Have you ever switched up makeup like mid ceremony for a bride? Typically, when I've gone in for a bridal client or a celebrity or everyday women, I like to kind of narrow the field a little bit because they don't understand what it takes to build the house. I know brick by brick what's going to layer well, what's going to sit well, and what's going to age well. Okay. You, you want, ideally, to start with less and build to the dramatic Going backwards can be difficult because it may interrupt the integrity of how things are layered and laying. I try to work it so that we do the lightest version of what they're into first and then gradually decorate the house. Oh, I like that analogy. Okay, so can we get a little technical here? When you're doing that, first of all, the six months to a year thing, like how far out from a wedding should someone start looking for a makeup artist, in your opinion? A year is what's typical. I personally don't like to commit a year in advance because there's all kinds of life changes that can happen between now yeah, and Yeah, so then. you might not lock in the date with the person, but you start meeting people? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, when I was doing that, I'm, I was open to it, but I'm more of a three to six month kind of guy okay. when I'm doing that kind of thing. It's just more re realistic for me to actually know that I'm going to be able to be there. Right. Some people are open to it. Yeah. Do you suggest a trial? Absolutely. I've only done <laughs> I've only done one in 25 years where I didn't do a trial and I actually regretted it. How did it go? What happened? In the whole 25 years, there's only been two that I took that I regretted. And it wasn't like a bridezilla moment. It's just that our energy wasn't in sync and I didn't feel like I had the trust. And let me tell you something. When I have somebody's trust... I can ultimately do a much better job because we're in an energy space together that's conducive to that. It wasn't like a big kind of, I hate my makeup kind of thing like that. I just wasn't getting a read one way or the other. I just think that she was already out of body with everything that's going on around her. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to gauge, am I satisfying my part of the bargain here? And she was already gone. You know, it, it was just a do bizarre you think that thing. On a, yeah, someone's listening and they're like trying to find a makeup artist. Do you think that's what the trial does both ways? Like you are getting to know her, but she's developing comfort with her makeup artist at the same time during that trial? Absolutely. And be very clear from a makeup artist standpoint, you're being auditioned by somebody, but I'm also auditioning you. I'm making determination <laughs> as to whether be I want to go Be on good behavior, into, ladies. <laughs> yeah. You know, do I want to go into the vortex with you? You keep calling it like the vortex, the black hole. She was in a space. Like what happens personality-wise on a wedding day? Like is it just nerves, do you think? I've been really fortunate, I have to say. I don't have any real horror stories about working in that space, but I'm very okay. sensitive to energies. And the energy has to be right. You, you, The trust is so important because whatever your dynamic is, prior to it, or let's say during the trial or the second trial, mm -hmm. whatever it is, imagine that times 10 on that day because you have a host of other people around them in their ear. They won't leave them alone, which means mm -hmm. they can't be still for you. So with every interruption and every stop and start, I'm having to scale back on what I can do. Like for instance, I could look at you and just do like a beautiful timeless look, beautiful skin, bold red lip, clean brow, there's levels that that can happen in. Let's say we booked an hour for me to sit with you, but your phone's going off and people are asking you things that somebody else should have taken care of. I know the highest level of that I can do, but every time I have to stop because you won't be still or something like that, I have to scale back on the cake I'm baking. Yeah, so that layering that you were doing, building up to something, you're having to constantly readjust how you're doing it. Exactly. Like, okay, we're not going to take a long, as long on this individual lash here, so we got <laughs> we got to keep moving along. Can we talk like, okay, 
I don't want to make it just about bridal because clearly a lot of the skills that you have translate to like events or things like that, or women who are doing their own makeup for a big event or something like that. Maybe you're going as a guest to a wedding. You're not going to pay to get a makeup. Maybe you will. Good for you. You pay for a makeup <laughs> artist. But more likely, you might be doing your own makeup too. And something that I think comes up a lot with this type of makeup, especially this time of year, is that it's just like getting it to stay put, getting someone to leave the house looking good. And clearly you have that skill set. So I'm curious, do you use long wear products? Because to me, they like feel so different. Like how do you get makeup to stay? You know, in the old days, I would use different primers after moisturizing the skin. But sometimes primers introduce texture to the skin that you don't necessarily want for that day. Sometimes that they start to roll later in the day. Primers have come a very long way. I'm not Mr. Primer, but if I know that they're going to be, <laughs> I'm just not. If I know they're going to be in a humid environment or they're oily, then I know I'm going to need to introduce an extra few steps to lock things down. And that happens before, not after. Yeah, before foundation. So this isn't like setting spray is not your key product here. It's the primer that's going to hold on to the foundation and the colors and everything. Setting spray can actually be great. And I'll tell you how. Like if I'm using a beauty sponge to apply the makeup, you know, it's slightly damp. I might get a little bit of the foundation on the beauty sponge and take a great setting spray and mist the beauty sponge so that it's already built into the cake. I'm calling this the cake. The cake keeps coming up. Wait, what's the setting spray? Like, what kind of setting spray do you like? Is there a particular one that's good to use in that that way? Danessa Myricks makes a really wonderful matte setting spray. And I, I can't remember the exact name of it right now, but she only makes two of them. And it plays well with the color? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And I just miss the sponge after I get the foundation on it. And that really locks down the product, makes it become mm-hmm. a part of the skin, makes it second skin. It's, it's amazing. And what about on the pre, pre-makeup pre end, the primers? Are there any particular primers you think are great for like sweaty, oily skin, hot weather, that kind of thing? There's actually a couple things. There's a product called No Sweat, comes in a little plastic bottle that you can okay. just lightly brush onto the skin because there's summer weddings. Some people are doing it outside. I've used it for television projects. Just a light application of no sweat after moisturizer, dust a little bit of loose powder on the face underneath your foundation to be another absorbing factor. It's very much like baking. <laughs> you have to set it up so that... So that the color stays. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of tricks. Danessa also makes something called balm powder that you should check out if you've never checked out balm powder. Have I tried? Is that the one I tried? The beauty balm I tried. There's like an invisible version of it and colors now. Yep. You know what it reminds me of? Do you remember Mally Roncal used to have this like, it was like a balm, clear balm with like a sponge? I do remember that. It reminds me a little of that. And it was like my go-to, I think it was called like poreless. I don't know. You know, these names, like they're ridiculous. And I would blot that on if I did TV because it was like shine stopping, but without powder, Texture. if that makes sense. Is that, do you agree? Is that kind of what I that do. does? The whole point of both of those is that you get the oil absorption factor without introducing the texture that powder eventually will introduce. Yeah. So that's, this is your cake is nice and smooth. Exactly. You should definitely try, are you a liquid or cream girl? For foundation? Mm-hmm. Liquid. Take a little bit on the back of your hand, maybe a pump of your liquid, and then take maybe a third of that amount in balm powder. Mix it together so it's one concoction, and you'd be shocked at how much longer your makeup lasts, but still looks like skin. support for today's episode comes from iHerb. iHerb offers the best curated selection of wellness products at the best possible value across a variety of categories like supplements, nutrition, beauty, and baby. I know I've mentioned them on the podcast before when I was talking about supplements that can help your skin, but I've recently gotten into their amazing selection of beauty products, including lots of hard to find brands and cool cult favorites. And guess what? Now that they're a sponsor, they're giving our listeners a big discount, 22% off. But first, let me tell you about two of my recent beauty discoveries on iHerb. So I'm a big believer in refreshing a room to sort of refresh your attitude in life. I know you can do that with sage, smudge sage, you know, you're burning sage. That's great. But listen... 
I'm not about to burn leaves in my apartment. So on iHerb, I found this amazing smokeless sage spray. It's from the brand Heritage Store. It's called Aura Smudge Smokeless Spray. It's like a linen or room refreshing spray and it has sage oil. So you get all the good vibes without the smoke. It's only $15.99, but obviously it's less with the discount code I'm about to give you. Before I do that, one more favorite. iHerb also has this brand I love that's out of Japan. It's called Kiss Me. Their Heroin Make Long Stay Sharp Gel Liner in dark brown is genius. It's great for tight lining between your lashes. It does not budge. It's a gorgeous dark brown shade. It's only $13. And again, that's before the discount. Iyer probably has some of your favorite beauty buys and some new ones you'll want to check out. Plus, you always get free shipping on orders over $20. It's time to get your health in check with iHerb. Our listeners are getting 22% off your first order when you use the code MASCARA at iHerb.com. That's 22% off your first order at iHerb.com. You use the code MASCARA as your promo code and you're going to get 22% off. Choose iHerb because wellness matters. Wow, this year is going by so fast. Father's Day is already coming up. Do you need a gift idea? Well, Jess and I have the best suggestion. Give your dad StoryWorth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories for years to come. Jess and I have given this to our dads and it's such a genius idea. This is how it works. Every week, StoryWorth emails your loved one a thought-provoking question of your choice. They have this whole pool of options. And these are questions you might never have asked your loved one before. Like, what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life? When would I ever say that to my dad without it being super corny? But with StoryWorth, it's a fun activity you can share together and it gives some structure to the idea of hearing your loved one's story. So it's really heartwarming and it doesn't feel weird at all. Anyway, StoryWorth will send the prompts and then collect all of the responses from your loved one and they'll compile them into a beautiful book, including any photos you want to add. And it's a keepsake you can share and revisit for generations to come. The book is really sweet, but honestly, the journey to writing it and sharing that with your dad is the real gift. Give all the dads in your life a unique, meaningful gift you'll cherish for years with StoryWorth. Right now, for a limited time, you can save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash mascara. That's storyworth.com, S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H.com slash mascara to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash mascara. So in Fat Mascara, we always talk about sunscreen, but let's be honest, sometimes it could feel a little bit like kind of like taking your medicine. Taizo is so different. It's almost like applying a primer. It feels like a primer. You're right. And this sunscreen is amazing. It is 100% a mineral sunscreen, which is so good because it works immediately when you put it on. You don't have to put it on 15 minutes before you go in the sun like you do with chemical sunscreens. Taizo stands for titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. These are the minerals and sunscreens that are the best choice for your skin, your body, even the environment. And you're going to look forward to putting it on. Like Jess said, it's sort of a primer. I would say it's like, first of all, it blends in to any skin tone. It has like a peachy beige color to it, the one that I use particularly, but it gives a nice slip and a little bit of a blurring quality. So you're putting on your sunscreen, you know you're going to be protecting yourself from all those signs of aging, but you're also perfecting your skin in the process, which is so nice. Also, Taizo products are cruelty-free, reef safer, free of parabens, gluten, fragrances, dye, phthalates. If that's important to you, Taizo is the sunscreen you're going to want to get, not just for summer, right now. Right now you should be wearing sunscreen. Go to TaizoSkin.com and use the code FATMASCARA15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. That's TaizoSkin.com, T-I-Z-O Skin.com and use the code FATMASCARA15 for 15% off your entire order. Oh, good tip. Okay, let's talk about blush. My face eats blush. So Jess and I love blush. We feel like it like wakes up a face. It's so underrated. People don't use it the right way. Yeah. You just look alive. But I'll put it on. I'll be like so happy. An hour later, where did it go? Where did it go, Nikki? <laughs> you know, that's really common. Like whether I'm using cream blush or powder, yes. typically by the end of the application, I've probably applied blush three times. And this is why. Any pigmented, any highly pigmented product 
you have to be careful of because you don't know how pigmented it is or how it responds to the skin that's that it's on. So it's a slow layering process. I'll sort of mark out my territory with placement. Maybe in the middle of the application, I'll hit it again to start to bump up the intensity. But I really don't know until the end how much I'm going to need because I need to introduce to myself how that product behaves on the skin that's in front of me. So meaning like you were working on the concealer and the foundation, then you put the blush on, you do a little eye, you do less, the, the, the face is absorbed a little, then you look at her again. I think it's time for another layer of blush. Absolutely. And I'll typically look at the client and say, you ate the blush. We need more. And so that during that like 20, 30 minutes that this is happening with her, you're already seeing how her skin reacts to blush and whether it's time to layer on a tiny bit. So it's like in layers is the key. Yeah, it's in layers. And you just okay. kind of keep an eye on it. I know. So I keep an eye on it and I think it looks great. And then it's just gone. Do you think I that you need powder to get it to stick around or can you do that with a cream blush? Depends. You know, some cream blushes are super emollient. Some of them are less emollient. And then you have the factor of who's wearing it. So it literally is an in-process kind of thing. You just don't know. However, I do like the idea of leaning more towards a cream blush and not strictly on powder because I want the skin to look supple in the end. Yeah, like sinks in a little more, right? Yeah, and just looks creamy and soft. What cream blushes do you like? Oh, gosh, I have so many. There's a company called Colored Rain. They make, I don't know how many colors, but... All of them that I've used have been amazing. It's highly pigmented. It just looks fleshy and supple on the skin. I've also used uh, Danessa's Color Fix, which is a highly pigmented cream liquid product, like a drop, Mm -hmm. pen drop, will take you a long way. You can use those anywhere on the face. I love using those on the cheeks. I'd have to think about who else. I probably have half a dozen types, but those are the ones that come to mind immediately because they're some of my go-tos to grab. Of course. Okay, well, this podcast is Fat Mascara. We have to talk lashes. Okay, what are your thoughts for an event makeup, for a wedding, whatever, you know, extensions versus a full strip versus individuals? I feel like makeup artists always have strong opinions about this. What are yours? I've seen the lash extensions look amazing, but in general, I don't think that they do. I'm not a, I'm not a lash tech, so I can't speak with you technically about their process or anything like that. I think less is more if you're going for a really natural look. Sometimes they can get in the way for event makeup because they speak too specifically to an aesthetic. Sometimes they're physically You in are the being way. so politically correct. You know <laughs> someone sits down in your chair with a big old shelf of fluff on, and you're like, and what am I supposed to do? You can't get the makeup. In? You can't get the makeup in. It's I like, can't even get into the eye, eye area. It's yeah. so big. So sometimes it's a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just trying to get my liner in. Yeah, so you'd prefer someone have their natural lashes, and then you'll work with them to, if they need it, add in some lashes. Yeah, I, I would rather have the option One of my clients who I love that I get to see when she's in New York, Sloane Stevens, I was able to do her for the Met Gala. And she would typically have a version of the lash extensions on. And as we were talking about our look, I asked her, would you not wear those for this occasion so that we can really build this from the ground up? And she was totally cool, fun to work with, very respectful of the work that we do. But, you know, we actually had a conversation about it. I just said, you know, I would rather you come without those on for this so that we can really build something special for the night. And she's so cool. I love when this happens. She's a former Fat Mascara guest. She came on in January. So she she helped us set intentions. You know how she's like the smartest woman alive and looks psychologically so balanced. I'm like, (laughs) please help us, Sloan. She's like, yeah, she's a force. So she took off. So if she normally wore extensions, she didn't wear them for you. And this, again, is something you discuss if you are hiring someone for event makeup. Make sure they know all this stuff, right? Yeah, and sometimes I'll ask because when I get a a photo reference for what they want to do, if they have that god-awful shelf on their eyes— I can't really sort of... I can't do gamine for you, honey, with the, no, <laughs> with no, the drag no, lashes. No, totally, totally. <laughs> you know, so... No, I get it. It's great if they're willing to have a conversation, and, and she's amazing, so... Sure, and that actually brings up an idea of, like, of reference photos. Do you like that? Do you like when people are, like, sending you photos? 
Oh my God, it's crucial. I'll tell you something. I don't know how many people do this. I just know the process works for me. Whether it's a do and go on a regular day or on a regular event day or wedding, I request three photos. I want to see a photo of you well lit with no makeup on whatsoever. I like to see a photo, of course, of what you want to look like, but also a photo of a time when you've done your own makeup and the combination of those three sort of gives me a panoramic understanding of what is going to be required. Okay, but if you're a lay person, you might not have those photos of yourself. You might be pulling like like a celebrity photo. I can't even tell you how many people like pulling these Sophia Richie photos, like this is what I want my wedding makeup to be like. Yeah. Like there's these iconic bride moments and they're showing you photos of another person. Is that okay? It is. It, it just gives you a, a beginning window into what it is they want to do. However, yeah. so many times you'll get a photo where the the, per, the reference photo is someone of a completely different complexion, different ethnicity. Mm. So then mm-hmm. you have to have another conversation. I can bring you into this template, but it's not going to look like that on you. It's a it's a it's like a jacket that you can wear, but everybody's going to look different in the jacket. So you have to manage expectations, and sometimes it gets interesting. Yeah. Are there any photos that you keep seeing like, or you yourself are like, this is an iconic bridal moment or even an event moment where you're like, they got it right. Yeah. So many pictures of Jennifer Lopez. You know, I get sent pictures of Janet Jackson, Viola Davis. Really interesting how many of those pictures are circulated over and over again because people are just inspired by them. And I'm really, I'm, I'm very real with people. If it's not something that's achievable, I'll tell them and I'll be like, let's, Let's talk about something else. Let's figure out what we can do that's really going to meet you where you are and bring out your best. But this won't work. Has anybody ever sent you a reference photo and you were the one who did the makeup? Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that, I feel like that'd be so fun. They're like, this looks great. And you're like, I did that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny when stuff like that happens because, you know, they don't always know. And, you know, people have photos on Pinterest and stuff like that. And, you know, I don't have uh-huh. any control over that. But, yeah, it, it's happened... It's happened a few times where somebody sent me a photo that I did, and they're like, do you think you can do this? I'm like, I think I can. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, did you tell them? Not right away. I sort of made a little joke about it later. But it's, it's, it's very flattering. It's a compliment, of course. I got us off topic of lashes. I have to ask you about mascaras because, okay, regardless of whether you're putting in lashes or not, do you have some like uh, mascaras that are not going to smudge? What are your mascaras with longevity? I'm a L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black guy. Classic. Buildable, smooth. It really, really lasts. You can really go into the war zone with it. Do you like a fresh tube for everybody? Or you know how that one, to me, it gets it changes a little, sometimes for the better, if it's been opened before because it thickens up a little? Or you like a fresh tube? What I do is I just take a fresh wand just for sanitary okay. purposes so I'm not of double course. dipping. But I'm like you. I actually do prefer the texture of that one once it's gotten a little bit drier. I feel like you can control it. It's less inky and more buildable. Yeah, like almost like a staining carbon yeah. instead of just like a wet Lucy goosey carbon. Okay, so L'Oreal Voluminous, that's a classic. Anything else for lashes that you always go back to, whether it's the type of lashes or... I used Maybelline Great Lash for a while. Whatever, I think I'm thinking of the right one, the one with the pink and green tube. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the classic. Been around forever, but the L'Oreal one ultimately beat that one out for me. <laughs> And you can get it to stay so it's not going to smudge on someone. Yeah, absolutely. What's the trick there? I feel like anytime I use anything other than a tubing mascara, it's going to end up under my eyes. What do you do to make sure that it doesn't? You can also take a little bit of a clear mascara or clear brow gel and do just like a quick sweep over the black once it's done. Anastasia Beverly Hills made a product once. I don't know if she still makes it, but it's it's a clear setting gel for the brows and for the lashes. And it actually does work. I'm super oily, and when I've worn mascara, uh, I didn't have any sort of breakdown of it. And oil is so the first like thing that's going to break it down. It's a sealant. That's a that's a better word. Absolutely. Okay. So those do work. I'll, I'll check that one out. I'm wondering, in your kit, well, how about if someone is making a kit? Like, they're going to do their own makeup. Is there any tool that's like a non-negotiable for you? Because I'm like a fingers girl, but I feel like when you do important day makeup, you should step up to some tools. <laughs> I think that people should have a great 
wedge sponge. Alcone makes these just regular, they're white angle sponges. They're, they're dense and firm, so you can really control and drive product where it needs to go. Now, I love fingers too, particularly for complexion. Your body heat just kind of melts the product and makes it look more skin-like. Mm-hmm. Placing your concealer under the eyes and just sort of dotting out where you want shading versus highlighting. Absolutely. Fingers are wonderful to get it started. And sometimes, depending on the formula of product, you can do your whole complexion application just with your hands. And why do you like a wedge sponge more than, say, like the teardroppy, bouncy, like beauty blendery shape? Precision and control. If I have to bang out a face, getting a really, sense really for your quick, personality, Nikki, you <laughs> so you're like uh, it's going to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you do your best. Let's let's take like a traditional egg sponge, um, a beauty blender, or whatever kind. You're oh, using. egg! That's what you call that. Sh- okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that for me is great for an overall layering of product, but the precise angles and corners of a wedge sponge, that's where you do your sculpting and hammer out the shapes that you want to create or emphasize or de-emphasize. So one to me is like a blunt tool and the Mm. sponge is a very specific strategic kind of tool. I could see that too when you're done, like, okay, this little bit of eyeliner. We should talk about this. So this happens to me when I do fancy makeup. If I make a mistake, I've gotten to that point where you're like, screw it. I'm trying to straighten this eyeliner, trying to straighten it. I can't straighten it. Back to the drawing board, back to the sink, redo the whole thing. Then you're all red because you had to rub off all the makeup. If you make a mistake, say like there's a mascara fallout or the lip is a little bit outside the line, what do you do that you don't have to start all over? Take the end of your wedge sponge, put a little bit of micellar water on it. And because that edge is razor sharp, you can just remove that fleck of um, mascara and like, clean like up blot even a red and lift. lift. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. almost like a razor, but it's a sponge. This is probably my problem. I go in all smearing and wiping and, okay, precision, precision, precision is the key. That's good to know. Yeah, very much so. You'll be obsessed. What's n- like a non-negotiable in your kit, like tool-wise? You have your wedge sponge. My wet sponges, in terms of application, you don't have to have the the highest quality of brushes, but there's a few basic shapes that you need. For lid and brow bone, you need something that's firm and flat because you're really just placing product there. Though That uh-huh. brush isn't meant to blend anything. It's meant to lay down the lid and brow bone. You just want to get the color there. Sort of a, a small, round, fluffy brush for blending and diffusing color. Like a dome shape or a flat shape? Dome. Dome, Like an actual, like, round dome. And then I would say, like, a firm angle brush, like a skinny little angle brush so that you can either fill in a brow or use cream or shadow or liquid as eyeliner. There's, you know, those basic shapes will get you most of the way with your eyes. And then if you're somebody who wants to cut a crease, then you need something that looks like a cartoon paintbrush, that traditional paintbrush shape comes to more of a point so that you can carve in to the lid space. Those shapes are really the beginning of what can be amazing, but you need them. Yeah, what brush brand do you you go back to a lot? I use Shu Uemura, who's not in the States anymore, unfortunately. Hakuhodo. I still still have some of my old MAC brushes. I Uh use a lot of different brushes. I've been collecting brushes this whole time, so... As many as I have, I'm always still looking at shape. Smith Cosmetics also makes some really amazing brushes that, in my opinion, are quite affordable. They did it in a really smart way. Cosette. Cosette. I'm thinking now, your kit, like say you were traveling and your kit got lost. What is like irreplaceable in there? Oh my God. You know, after this long, I would just cry. I would just be a ball of tears because... (laughs) There's so there's so many products in my kit that are, that are discontinued, but I. That's found, what I mean. What are some of your favorites that are discontinued? I'm so curious. Ah, uh, there's um, there's a Bobby Brown eyeshadow. I think it's called Raisin or Black Raisin. I can't remember. It's like this deep sort of umber, burgundy color. It's great for mm. shadow. It's great for liner. They don't make it anymore. Gosh, there's so many. I I go blank when you ask me that because there's so many over the years. A lot of them are eyeshadows, highlighters. Just like these perfect colors that you just yeah. keep going back to. You know, these colors that you can use on so many different people. It would just be an awful thing because 
I hold on to those things because they're special to me. And you look for dupes where you can find them, but they may not exist. Fashion Fair made two press powders that were really amazing, cola and sable. Cola is like a sort of chocolate brown. Sable is this sort of deep golden brown. Don't make it anymore. And you just kind of hoard and hold on to those things as long as you can. Make a Forever had a pencil and eyeliner, sort of a sort of a chubby pencil. They've made a new version of it, but I still have a few of the old version. Which oh, are they I'm called like aqua with. liners or something? Yep. The, yes, the they were ones. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, something that gets in the waterline and actually stays. Yeah, they had that. You, you, they reminded me of like the Urban Decay twenty four seven. It's that like gel kind of yeah. formula. Those really get in between the lashes nice, don't they? Yeah. So those kind of things you fight for. <laughs> you fight for. Or you're traveling, you're like, she's not worth it. I'm leaving it at home. <laughs> you have to make those choices. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so what about you personally? Are you, Is this still your look? Is still just the mascara, a little concealer? Or like, have you stepped it up? What products do you like to use on yourself? On myself, I'll use a little bit of one of uh, Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Away concealers under my eye. It has a really sort of skin-hugging texture that stays very flat. It doesn't sort of roll or ball up and look obvious. I like some of Fashion Fair's pressed powders when I want to give myself a little bit of dimension and bronzing. For brows, I've been using one of the Kevin O'Quan. It's like an it's like an ink pen with a marker tip that really skinny. Oh. I think that's new, right? I think it is newer for them. I used to use pencils on myself because I I would look at these marker pens and I would think, well, I don't want this to look really obvious, but it's sheer enough that it looks really natural if I want to do that. I'll do my L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black for my lashes. There's a colored rain, cream blush. It's sort of an apricot color that makes sense on me for a natural version of myself. And... What else? Fenty skincare. has... Oh, Fenty. Oh, skincare. Oh, yes. Well, first the Fenty, I interrupted and I need to know. What's, oh, no, what's... it's okay. It's called Invisimat. It's a mattifying powder that you can use on any complexion. Mm-hmm. Those kind of products aren't all built equally. Some of them actually look white on the skin and not just because I'm brown, even on a Caucasian skin. They're meant to be invisible, but you have to really curate that part of your kit. Um, Invisimat's been great. No flashback when you take a photo, like it's actually yeah. invisible. You know, okay, you have to be really careful it. about that. In terms of skincare, I get to try a lot of different things because I am fortunate enough to be sent different things to try. I'm loving the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. My skin mm-hmm. just feels amazing after I put it on and it has sort of a, a luminous finish and I love the smell of it. Would you put makeup with that or is that like you're like, if I'm doing nothing, this alone will just make my skin look Makeup good. sits beautifully with it. Oh, it works Absolutely. well with makeup too. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I like that. Embryolise Late Cream is really popular in a lot of makeup artist kits, but, it, you know, it's, it's great for us on an everyday basis as well. What else? Are you fragrance guy at all, Nikki? Do you wear any fragrance? You know what? I'm not. I'm okay. not, I have a few, but I rarely use them. Well, you're all up in someone's personal space. I feel like you also have to be wary of bringing in a scent. That is something that we have to be careful of because people are sensitive to different things. I would never want to come into someone's personal space like that, loaded up with fragrance like I was going out or something because something like that can sort of ruin an experience for them. It's all about the vibe. Yeah. You want the vibe to be neutral. Yeah. Okay, before I let before I let you go, I wanna I wanna do my fat mascara five with you. I have some like fun, speedy questions for you. What's the makeup look you're most proud of? Whether because it was like a challenge situation, you just loved how it turned out. I was doing some work earlier in the pandemic on episodic television, which was new for me to work in. So this is when we had on the face mask, the visor. We were working 14, 16 plus hour days was working on an A-lister for that in a very intense environment. You know, I'm talking about your ears are sore from hours of having the visors and stuff like that. The look itself was very natural, but the environment was a little bit more tense because we were all still earlier in the pandemic. And I was able to sort of drop myself into that environment and quickly adjust to make sure that the client was happy, that they looked great on television. It was a lot to take on, but I was able to navigate based on my other experiences. Am I allowed to ask what TV show? The Equalizer. Okay. 
That does sound like a challenge. Well done. You you rose to you rose to the occasion, Nikki. Yeah, it was just a lot. To, it was it was a new environment for me. A lot of moving parts, and I was able to just adjust to all of those moving parts while my face was completely strapped. Yeah. It was you know that's a lot. It is okay. Whose makeup would you like to do that you haven't ever done yet? Janet Jackson, possibly Viola Davis, possibly J Lo. All right, let's put it into the universe. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. There's power in the tongue. Exactly. What celebrity do you think you'd be best friends with? Okay, makeup aside, it doesn't even have to be a woman, man. Maybe there's a famous dog. I don't know. What celebrity (laughs) do you think you'd be friends with? Danya Ramirez was really cool. I've worked with her a few times. That doesn't count. You've already worked with her. Who else? Like a show you watch or something, you're like, that's my person. The Maoris. Tia, Tamara. Oh, okay. They seem really cool. The funny thing is, at at this point, I'll sort of have a list of people in my head, and then that sort of goes away, and other people show up. I don't think about it so much in those terms anymore. I I think about it in terms of the genre that I'd like to work in. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. I was more thinking about who you're going to go have like a drink with or go get coffee, and it could be T and Tamara. I think they'd be fun. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The list sort of goes away. (laughs) That's all good. What's your favorite indulgent snack? Ice cream. Which one? Give us details, please. Pineapple coconut Haagen-Dazs will change your world. Yeah. I have. This is a first because I often ask this. Ice cream comes up a lot. I've never heard this flavor mentioned. Why is it so good? It's just everything. I mean, Haagen-Dazs is such an indulging thing. It's like I don't have it very often, but it's just it's everything. What's funny is I I posted about it one day on my Instagram, just having fun and just sort of joking around. And my students started bringing it to me when they would come to my studio. Oh, They'd show up with haagen you know, which is really, really cool. And that and pizza. I mean, I just love both. Oh, I love it. Okay. Last question. What do you need to get your beauty sleep? Like this has to be this way for me to sleep. I start with a really, a nice long hot shower. I like a candle. I might put on some Oh, what Sade. candle? You said, oh, Sade, for sure. But back to yeah. the candle. I'm so sorry. What's burning right now at the Posley household? <laughs> My favorites were the ones that NARS used to make, but they don't make them anymore. Did you ever get to the red, uh-huh. the white, and the black? Oh. They were so amazing, and they broke my heart when they stopped making those. Alcone actually makes a really great candle, too. I don't know the name of it, but Alcone, the beauty supplier, they make an amazing candle. You should check that out. I will. Okay, so you you take your hot shower, you put you light your candle, put on Sade, and then it's off to beauty sleep for you? Yeah, yeah. I just like a really clean space, a little bit of soft music. And, you know, the shower just kind of relaxes me. I may stretch a little bit to sort of wind down the day. Yeah. I try to have some rituals that help me kind of detox because, you know, when you're around people all day and you're absorbing and reflecting energies all day, you sort of take that in and your body holds on to it. So anything for me that helps me just sort of come back to center, the shower, the stretch, try to stay really hydrated, all of that. It all works together. So that you can let everybody else's energy go, get back to Nikki and get a good night's sleep. I love that for you. Absolutely. Oh, this was so helpful. I am like, I now have a shopping list that's like 20 products long. I'm so glad you shared some of your favorites with us, but also more about you. It was so great to get to know you. Thank you. Likewise, likewise. Yeah, you, you, you have to be careful hanging around me as the shopping list creates itself because, you know, we'll both be living in cardboard boxes, sister. No, that's what we need. We love when people (laughs) share their favorites. Thank you again for coming on Fat Mascara. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure meeting you. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product review or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at Fat Mascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening.
So in Fat Mascara, we always talk about sunscreen, but let's be honest, sometimes it could feel a little bit like kind of like taking your medicine. Taizo is so different. It's almost like applying a primer. It feels like a primer. You're right. And this sunscreen is amazing. It is 100% a mineral sunscreen, which is so good because it works immediately when you put it on. You don't have to put it on 15 minutes before you go in the sun like you do with chemical sunscreens. Taizo stands for titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. These are the minerals and sunscreens that are the best choice for your skin, your body, even the environment. And you're going to look forward to putting it on. Like Jess said, it's sort of a primer. I would say it's like, first of all, it blends into to any skin tone. It has like a peachy beige color to it, the one that I use particularly, but it gives a nice slip and a little bit of a blurring quality. So you're putting on your sunscreen, you know you're going to be protecting yourself from all those signs of aging, but you're also perfecting your skin in the process, which is so nice. Also, Taizo products are cruelty-free, reef safer, free of parabens, gluten, fragrances, dye, phthalates. If that's important to you, Taizo is the sunscreen you're going to want to get, not just for summer, right now. Right now you should be wearing sunscreen. Go to TaizoSkin.com and use the code FATMASCARA15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. That's TaizoSkin.com, T-I-Z-O Skin.com and use the code FATMASCARA15 for 15% off your entire order. This special story is brought to you by our sponsor, Kate Spade, New York. Okay, you guys know how we feel about summer. It is not always easy breezy. Sometimes it's sweaty, frizzy, and if it is us, you know there's going to be bug bites, <laughs> among other things. <laughs> Bring us back to fall. Why are we so anti-summer? We really shouldn't be. You know what? Because we spend so much time in the city, the subways, the scents, all of that. We're looking for a little bit of escape, a little bit of convenience. You know, that, that goes out the window once the temperature hits like 90. I guess. But I try and find a little bit of like fun and adventure even here in New York City. And it always just backfires, remember? No, but it's there to be found. It's there to be found. Wait, okay, what? I had adventure. But do you remember, I, it was, I think it was two summers ago, I went out to Jones Beach Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm so romantic. Me and Eric are going to take a bike ride out. It was like a big, long bike ride, gotten some exercise. Isn't there something like very sexy sometimes about doing like a sport with a loved one? Like you get a little adrenaline going, whatever. So we're biking through. I've never done that, but keep going. <laughs> we're biking through like these nice little back roads to get to Jones Beach where we're going to go to the beach. And all of a sudden, like, I guess Eric biked over do mosquitoes have hives? I don't think they do, but like whatever he biked over stirred up a mosquito swarm. I don't know how else to describe it. I ended up with, all right, longtime listeners are going to remember the number and I don't, but I think it was 37. Do you remember what I looked like? I had 37 bug bites. Oh and then God. I found out later they were tiger mosquitoes. Oh my God. Because we don't have normal mosquitoes here in New York City. Oh my God. It was my summer of misadventure. <laughs> the summer of misadventure. Oh my gosh. Well, so this summer, listen, we're going to be more prepared. We're going to look like those people who have it together. We're going to wear white. We're going to have cute little outfits. And we're <gasps> going to pack the perfect beach bag. <sighs> I got a new one from our fabulous sponsor, Kate Spade, New York. It's black and tan crochet raffia. It has the perfect strap drop. It's really cute. It's very me. It's neutral, so it goes with a lot of my things. And you look polished. I, I love polished. this idea of packing the perfect summer bag. I feel like there's so much you can't control in life. Like having everything you need in your bag is like key. So I'm just going to share a little bit of what I'm putting in my bag this year. I really think it's going to help. I'm not going anywhere without Band-Aids. I'm not going anywhere without like shout wipes in case I get a stain. Mm -hmm. Eric's very into white denim this summer. Great, Eric. You know what gets really dirty? White denim. White denim. Oh. This man really is a, a, a works at a men's style fashion magazine. Well, he does work at Esquire. Yeah, and yeah. I got yeah. these little cutter mosquito wipes. And sell it, it's the insect repellent in a white form, so I can like if we're just gonna do you know something off the cuff and we do something out in the woods, I will be prepared. I always have my sunscreen, you know, a little little essential oil. So in case I want to need to do some breathing exercise, you know, how people always like take deep breaths to help yourself like yeah. chill in the summer. I like to put a little like roll on on my palms and breathe in through them and breathe out. Do you like that for me? It's funny. I just stocked up on my Tata. Oh yeah, mine's Tata Harper. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. Okay, I'm gonna put those in my Kate Spade New York bag. And I think mm -hmm. that'll be, I'll be ready to have an excellent summer. And we hope you're all inspired to have an excellent summer. Pack your own little summer survival kit. Treat yourself to a new bag from Kate Spade New York. 
They have this incredible summer collection. Now, it's their 30th anniversary, and their summer of adventure, not misadventure, of adventure, and they've got all sorts of new clothing, accessories, including a reissue of their iconic Sam bag that started it all back in 1993. You can shop their entire collection on katespade.com. And thank you again to our sponsor, Kate Spade, New York. <laughs> 